Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Emergency Home Learning Summit. I'm excited to be here and I have the Rethinking Learning series. And I have a special person, Don Harris. I'm so glad you're here. Hi, Barbara. How are you? I'm um, glad to be here. I just love that you wanted to do this with me. And, and when we started talking about what we were going to talk about, it just it's all about getting in the flow. We were in the flow. <laughs> I agree, we were. It was just kind of magical how it was happening, right? As we were talking and like merging our ideas, it just unfolded. And I think it's really beautiful. I think everyone's going to enjoy what's here. So I'm excited to share. Oh, and wait till they see all the resources and everything you <laughs> shared. So our, our title is Engaging Learnings to Get in the Flow During Uncertain Times, and these are. So I put in um, both of our Twitter handles, but you'll also know that this slide show, the presentation is going to be in a PDF. And we also have a handout that will be included, but I put in the bit.ly on the lower left. If you haven't registered, then down on the lower right, you'll see the URL you can use to register. Oh, we never knew that we could do this. <laughs> we did not. It's quite shocking. In fact, when we think back to several months ago, um, when, you know, everything began to just unfold right before us, it was so, there was so much uncertainty and fear um, and unpreparedness, right? More than anything, we were thinking, what are we going to do? Um, and I'm so amazed at all of the things that teachers have done to just make learning continue to happen for students. It's, you know, as, as tragic as the situation is, um, what has happened for our students, I think has just been um, really beautiful to help them access learning in ways we never thought we would even be doing this day as educators, so. I'm proud of educate. I mean, the teachers, the, they've gone way beyond the, what they thought they could do. And even parents uh, and the kids, I'm, I'm just, but it's still difficult. And that's why we wanted to talk about some of these things. Absolutely, absolutely, so, I agree. Mm -hmm. So I, what we wanna do is kind of share with you how we wanna set the stage for engagement, especially when we're in this pandemic. Yeah, yeah, engagement is so important. It really is, right? We talk about that's the key to education more than anything. And that was the struggle is how are we going to get in kids engaged in this current situation? Or keep ourselves engaged. <laughs> like yeah, you said. Exactly. That as well, for sure. <laughs> I think that one of the things that was hard because some some teachers um, weren't getting the support they needed and that our parents were at, you know demanding things. I mean, there was a lot of things that were happening, but it all comes back to how can we get back into the moment? Right. Yeah. So we came up, you came up with some great ideas. And I'm going to have you share what. <laughs> well, yeah, it was um, when we entered into this, right? As educators, it's always our job to present questions to students um, in many shapes and forms, big questions, essential questions, you know, getting them thinking. When the pandemic hit, it became we were the ones, educators, presented with those questions. How are you going to do this? Where are you going to do this? How are you going to? you know, carry out education with kids and getting them in, engaged in classrooms, what resources do you need? So all of those, those questions mm -hmm. that we pose to students every day ended up in our laps and we had to figure out a way, uh, many ways, not just a single way, but a multitude of ways to engage learners in a variety of settings. You know, students were learning in definitely non-traditional ways. Um, mm -hmm. And we had to figure out how to address those needs, whether they were at home learning, whether they were learning at school back in the classroom as my students are we've been back face to face from the beginning um, or even in a hybrid setting and i think the interesting thing is you know that we we found kids in situations that we had been teaching them with technology before and using computers and even remotely in some cases students were learning online but this time was different because there was a lot involved the fear of the pandemic itself what was going to happen you know we were trying to keep our families and our kids safe ourselves safe as teachers there's so many policies and guidelines put in place that had the potential to hinder learning greatly it was more of a challenge than i think any of us ever anticipated um, going into education you know you, 
you mentioned a question and one of the questions I'm asking now is, are you okay? I mean, right away, I just want to find out where you are. And I got that from Keisha McDonald because I was asking, how are you doing? And she said, that's opening a Pandora's box. You, you really want to just find out if they're okay right now. Yeah, absolutely. That is, an, that is a new essential question in teaching in the COVID age, as I like to refer to it, right? We have to check on one another. We have to check on our students. It's so important because <clears throat> we know that if somebody's not feeling okay, for sure, learning isn't going to occur. And if our teachers are not okay, you know, effective teaching isn't going to occur. So it's definitely important. You're right. We're looking out for one another. Yeah. Well, I love that. And that um, these essential questions, when I did a lot of questioning work, I, I had the kids come up with essential questions. Yes. Can you do that now too? I mean, Oh yeah, we can oh, for that's sure. Good. That's good. <laughs> Every day we've been doing it. <laughs> you know what? I didn't even have you introduce what you you know where you teach and and yeah. uh, tell, tell just a little bit about that and uh, then we move on. I'm really sorry. I usually do. That. No, it's okay. I was just excited <laughs> to get in here. I was, it was super excited <laughs> to talk about what's going on. Yeah. Um, school's been fantastic this year. You know, we, um, as I mentioned, my district, I work in a small um, district in Southwest Ohio, just north of uh, the Cincinnati area, about halfway between Dayton and Cincinnati. And we did return um, to full you know, classrooms, we're taking measures to ensure students are safe, right? Social distancing when we can, um, you know, keeping things clean and tidy, but we're back. We're back in the classroom and we're learning. And it was, um, it was a little challenging at first, just getting kids acclimated, but it's been fun. Um, I also uh, teach um, in uh, pre-service uh, education, pre-service teaching education at Wright State University, which is a local university here in the Dayton area adjacent to Wright Patterson Air Force Base. Um, which is is nearby hmm. so uh, actively engaged in teaching young people teaching adults uh, and my partner Tracy Browder and I we've recently um, begun working with school districts to um, assist them in building out equity teams and developing anti-racist curriculum mm -hmm. and working on racism awareness within their communities. So that's been really exciting. I can tell you I'm very, very busy and I love every moment of it. It's fantastic. Yeah. In fact, it was, I was amazed we could find a time. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I think I, too, I, actually. <laughs> yeah, no. And, and you're writing a book too. And I'm, yes, I am writing a book as well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you got a lot on your plate. It's, it's I wonderful. Do. I'm wonderful. So the whole idea of the pandemic, we, we think we can continue teaching like we always did, mm -hmm. but you were able to go back, but not every teacher, some are doing it uh, remotely. Absolutely. So you came up with this, I love the slides. Why don't you explain a little bit what you were thinking here? Yeah, so back in March when we first we because we did go remote in March my district when when everything was really starting to shut down um, at the beginning of um, COVID teaching right uh, we thought for a moment it might be okay having kids at home right that they weren't at school they check in every day it would be exciting they get to zoom <laughs> we had hoped that they would be energetic and enthusiastic they didn't have to get up and come to school you know they could learn in pjs and and using technology um but it wasn't quite like that right it was tough and and i think we all really knew that was going to be the reality we had high hopes but it was really a challenge as with many schools to get students um, fully engaged. And we know that engagement is truly the key to educating kids. And so if they're not logging on or when they are logging on, um, we haven't got the right resources um, to support learning in a way that fosters engagement, then you know, we're not, not gonna be effective at what, what we were doing. We, we were very fearful of that. Um, and it was a struggle. You know, we had some kids who were committed, even in a remote environment, and then we had others who were not. And we had parents, you know, who were working outside the home who could not support learning. You know, I teach high school, um, and even high schoolers, along with the young ones, need some encouragement and coaxing to get online and learn and, and to be engaged with learning and their peers and their teachers. So whether we're inside of schools or outside of them now that we're back in the classroom, 
um, because of various um, obstacles within the classroom, it can be challenging to keep kids engaged, especially when we're teachers who focus on um, helping kids to learn collaboratively. And we like doing group work with students and we have limitations now that prevent those kinds of things from happening. So how do we do that and have these wonderful, excited, bright, you know, students who are ready to learn um, in what is somewhat like a traditional setting that they've been accustomed to, but at the same time, not. Um, it's, it's, it has been a little bit difficult for students to kind of get their heads around, like we can't necessarily engage with one another in the ways that we have in the past, but we still have to get the learning done. And so as educators, it's really our responsibility to find ways to get those kids engaged in these, mm, what are no longer traditional settings, even when they feel like traditional settings. <laughs> Well, I've seen some teachers that even set up their home office, looks like their classroom. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> but, but it is uh, interesting. Some teachers are saying, you know, the kids are coming up with ideas on how to collaborate. They're looking at different tools, different projects. Yes. And uh, I've even done some work with uh, 4-H and the mm. kids talked about some of the projects they're doing. It's coming up with new ways to use Zoom. I thought, oh, yeah. I'm going to have to learn from them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can always learn from our kiddos. They teach me so much so often. I'm telling you, I never underestimate their ability to teach me something new. <laughs> I know, I know. It's, it's amazing. But um, one of the things that I wonder, because you were able to go back, um, so there are a lot of schools aren't going back, mainly because they didn't have the support or the resources, or um, they didn't feel they were safe. Yeah. So right now, everything's kind of normal. I mean, other than the precautions. Yeah. Um, in my building, we are, you know, we're just taking extra steps to keep things extra clean. We're keeping kids distanced um, as often as possible. Um, and we're masking up every single day. You know, we have a, a mandate in our um, actually in Ohio and the schools um, have implemented that as well. And the kids, they are just so diligent about coming in every day and being safe. And they understand, hmm. you know, the situation and, and the seriousness of it. Um, and I'm so proud of them this year. They are, just, they're really working hard. And I think they're just happy to be there because they were mm -hmm. away for so long. And it's funny, you think kids are like, oh, I'm so excited to be out of school, you know, like last spring, yes, yeah, school's out. <laughs> <laughs> but man, they were ready to get back this fall. They were excited to be there and um, yeah. they're doing everything that they can to stay. You know, this pandemic offers so many challenges and, and even still we see numbers, you know, increasing every day and they're very much afraid of us not being able to remain in school. And, yeah. you know, as are we, it's, it really is the best place for them. Um, but we also have to be safe. Right. And, and, consider all that's going on um, and getting them the education that they need. So. Well, one of the things that um, I know, especially high school, mm -hmm. they're looking at graduating eventually and what, yeah. you know, they may have lost credits and yeah. there's a lot of things that happen. So very neat. Yeah. So I'm glad they're glad to have, I'm really sure they're really happy that you're there. <laughs> yeah, they are. And, and you're right. There are, so many challenges um, with even the new students who are coming in to the high school because I teach freshmen. Um, and it's already, there's a little anxiety associated with coming into that new building from the junior high grade levels. And this added a little bit of um, complexity to that for them, but they're navigating well. And then the seniors on um, the other end Mm -hmm. um, of the grade scale are excited to, you know, to get on with things, but they're, they're also missing out on some opportunities that they wouldn't, you know, have normally missed out on as a result of well, the pandemic. And everything changed like proms, uh, yes. dances or uh, yeah. sports. I mean, there's a lot of things that are uh, impacting them. And I, this is where empathy comes in. Cause I, you know, if you put yourself in their shoes, it's completely different. It, it is. And I, ha I had a student say oh, the sorry. other day, oh, that's okay. I had a student say the other day, it was, I mean, I was the, my emotions were so mixed. We were talking about, you know, we're going to talk later on about just taking a pause and regrouping with students. And we were having a moment of pause the other day. And, you know, the kids were saying, you know, it's really scary still coming in, you know, but we want to be here. And, and one of my students, she said, 
every day when I leave my house, my father, he sees the look on my face and he gives me a hug and pats me on the back and says, you're making history, kid. You're making history. (laughs) And I was like, oh my gosh, it's one of those bittersweet moments. Like, yeah, you really are. And one day you're going to look back and you have these stories and whatnot. But at the same time, you know, you're, you're, and they feel it trudging out into this, you know, unknown territory, not knowing what each day will hold. And it's, it is a big burden for them to bear coming into the building. That Um, is, you know, I mean, it's amazing when you say that and, um, Oh, that's so cool that the, yeah. but you yeah. know, I've been, I have a granddaughter who's then um, still in middle school. She's, uh, but when, you know, her thing was, um, I'm making the best of it yeah. <laughs> and I have my own pod and they, they're all virtual, but they figure mm-hmm. out a way that they can get together. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing that I'm hearing most of the time is that they're not back. So yours is an, a, you know, uh, kind of um, unique, really, from mm-hmm. what I'm hearing. But I think maybe high schools really want the kids because they are more independent. Yeah. And there's a lot, of, there really is a lot at stake when we think about high school. You think about, you know, kids focusing on their GPAs for college. You think about college entrance exams, you know, again, just the, the every day that comes with being a high school student and enjoying those, um, you know, traditional kinds of activities that occur being in high school. Um, half of the fun is really just being at school and being with your friends. And um, it's, it's, I think it's important for them to be there. It's important. It's very important for them to be safe. And we always want them to be safe. Um, but I think I know that my district is taking steps to, to make sure that happens for students. And that's the most important thing. As long as we can keep them there, I think I think we should. But also, we do also have a group of students who are learning um, remotely online because we did give parents the option and students if they didn't feel comfortable. They do have a remote learning option available as well, um, which is nice. The only thing we aren't doing right now is any kind of hybrid learning um, where we have students learning part-time online and part-time in person. Um, so... I, I am glad that some of our students did have the option to learn online. You know, the families yeah. were able to make that decision for themselves. I think it depends on the families too. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm, this is one of the things that, well, wait a minute, I'm going back. I yeah. want to make sure, because I was missing, a, there was a slide that was missing, unfortunately, but um, one of the things that you mentioned was if, you know, some of the kids are not prepared because the families aren't prepared. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I want to make sure that we cover that part. Yeah. You know, we just need to make sure that when we are, especially now, obviously, even before, we always want to make sure that family and parent contact, um, caregiver contact mm-hmm. is something that's at the forefront of what we do, right? And making sure that that families know what's going on with their students. A lot of times we come across situations where parents aren't quite sure, like, how do I get a hold of a teacher? Where do I find information about my student? They may not be as adept or skilled in using the technology that's necessary to access grades in a, a grade book online or sending an email, something like that. So um, it's important to make sure that we give, especially now, um, parents and families, um, a number of ways um, through which they can communicate with us and we can communicate and provide feedback to them as well. Uh, but students the same, Barbara, this has been so critical since last spring. We never realized how important it was for students to understand how to how to properly um, assemble an email. And oh, that really? the, whole, the message doesn't go in the subject line and, you know, <laughs> making sure we're getting it to the right person because people's names <laughs> look alike. Um, so there was oh, a wow. lot, of, yeah, there was a lot that we had to do, you know, even I'm, I'm in a district where our, all of our students are one-to-one. So every student has a computer, um, but there just weren't things that we had to focus on, like, you know, um, communicating outside of the normal, let me go up to Mrs. Harris's desk and ask her a question kind of a thing. Well, uh, we had to, we yeah. had to broaden that a little bit. <laughs> you know, kids don't use email. That's, no. they're massive. they text and they do. They do. Yes. <laughs> it's not and it became very apparent in those emails <laughs> that they are adept at texting um, because we had a text. <laughs> 
a lot of text lingo. And so we had to address that in addition, helping kids to be able to communicate and helping parents to be able to communicate in this new environment. So that's mm. been really important, giving them a number of ways through which they can access um, us and information about that's, their children. That's very good because I mean, it's almost, you'll have uh, tutorials over here. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> or you have, uh, like, I worked in Oakland School District, and we used to have, uh, they had their own TV station, and the kids would run it and run. Now, if you want to go here, you go over here. You know, I could just see yeah. them doing that. It would be so cool. So um, now I want to go to the one on organization, because this might take it a little step further. You did mention some things, but this is really cool. Yeah. Um, so first and foremost, the the syllabus for me is always, you know, really important document um, that I make sure that students and families have every year. And I think, you know, the good majority of teachers um, provide information to um, students and families about how they can access important information related to the class, what's going on in the class, not just what you need or what the classroom policies are, but especially with making the shift um, because even in one to one, the one to one environment that we were in, we were still passing a lot of papers and things back and forth. Now we want to try to eliminate that contact and going completely with tech. I made sure to integrate into my syllabus um, the, the class codes to the, the technology that we're going to be using throughout the year. So they had those readily available. Um, accessing my Snapchat where I post information about <laughs> assignments. And I'm like, I tell them all the time, like, I'm not following you back. You can follow me. I don't care what you're doing on Snapchat. I don't want to know. But if you want to know what to do on Monday, then you should follow me. <laughs> you have all, you. Do you have all the cute little things on you? And <laughs> sometimes, sometimes. Uh, mostly it's just a snap of the assignment and like, this is due, right? Get this done. Um, oh, but good. I wanted to make that syllabus just a one-stop shop, not, you know, page after page after page, yeah. um, because the really great thing is working, um, we use the uh, Google suite of products for learning in our district, and once parents are involved in that process and they become part of the classroom experience, then they have really access to all of the active mm -hmm. learning that's going on through Google Classroom. Um, I think so, that's the next slide, right? Is it, it may be. I, yeah, I, there it is. There it yeah, is. it is, it is. Um, we, we do talk about though, the way that we communicate. I, I told students though, you know, it's not necessary that we have to even communicate via email because in Google Classroom, you can use private comments and those private comments come right into my email anyway. So if you're actively working in the assignment and you have a question, just type a private comment it will pop right in my mailbox and then we've saved an entire step. And because it's in the assignment, I already know what you're talking about. You don't have to explain, hey, Mrs. Harris, you know that assignment where we were going to do a storyboard for Mice and Men. Oh, you're commenting right from that assignment. I know what you're asking me about. So it's been really helpful, but um, inviting students to the classroom has been key and making sure early that we get the guardians invited, um, whether it's I reach out to them or a lot of the parents know they've been in the system um our school district a while they know we use google and the first thing they do when the kids come home is you know i'm logging into your classroom what's your class code <laughs> you know let me get in there as a parent so um cool that's that's been it's been really good having parents we've a good percentage of guardians parents and guardians who join into um google classroom to see what's going on and what their learners are are um engaging in each day. Um, this, this slide, um, you see at the bottom, it says third period honors English there. One of the things I did differently this year, and I learned this from Alice Keeler, I'm so excited about it. I wanted to change my Google headers this year. Um, and I was looking for, it's amazing, I stumbled across it. I was looking for what were the dimensions for the Google banner for Google Classroom. And of course, this pops up and it was, uh, as I mentioned from Alice Keeler, and I was like, this is brilliant because kids all the time, they go to the first page and Google Classroom and it's just a stream of everything that's posted. Nothing mm -hmm. is organized or categorized. It's just 
put up there in the order that I added. Well, Alice Keeler said, no, look up there, not down here. Go to the classwork tab. And so uh, this Bitmoji finger says, go to classwork. So when they click on classwork, then you can see in the image above, we have all of these topics. And right now we are in the midst of our horror unit. <laughs> it's super exciting. And so you can see this is a snap of our classroom um, last week, but the kids can just go right to the topic that we're focusing on and find their assignments. And it's so much easier than they're scrolling through like, where was that? And, and that, that stream is just so filled with stuff. Um, the other thing that we started to use this year was the Google Calendar. Um, I was really surprised at how few students realized that they can actually see their assignments. Um, you know, I always tell myself, Dawn, don't take anything for granted. Don't assume kids know things. <laughs> <laughs> and yet I do, <laughs> why, why? Uh, but when we talked about the calendar and I showed them that your, your assignments populate here, you don't need that assignment book or, or the agenda that we used to get each year because everything is right there. And so we had a mini lesson on how to even populate our own events in there, mm -hmm. things that we wanted to add, practices or you know sleepovers or birthdays or anything that we wanted to add to that calendar. And now they're so excited and they check their calendars often to see what's coming mm -hmm. up. But it's, it's so important to have that extra layer of information there for them um, so they don't have to continue to just search and search and search for what's yeah. coming up, what's due. And it's all integrated so easily. So it they can is it. very easy. And I know Alice really well. So I, I, I she just has all these great tools. It's she amazing. does. Oh my goodness, yeah. she does. I was yeah. so thankful for that. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell her. <laughs> yeah, you better tell her. That's really cool. So let's go to the next level. We talked about engagement. And I'm just sharing something that I pulled together, which uh, this is a uh, derivative of one that I created for my first books, which with Kathleen McCloskey, when we wrote uh, Make Learning Personal and How to Personalize Learning. And when I started sharing that out, it was based on the, where the teacher was. And so this one is more about learners and teachers are learners too. So I wanted to show that you could be at any level, depending on where you're at. like you might be in math class, you might be compliant because maybe you're just feeling um, anxious about the assignments. You don't have the connection with the teacher. There could be a lot of things, but in another class or an outside activity, you might be in the flow. Mm -hmm. And that's what the flow is. The flow is when um, it's called uh, Mihaly, Sekmanch Mihaly <laughs> has the flow theory and so in my, um, I'll have a link to the, the post for that. I think that would be for people to see about the flow theory is that when you have the challenge and the skills and you're feeling like this is something you're really excited about, you can't even stop it. You're all excited about it. And what we got to figure out a way we can get kids either more connected or in the flow around something. So some schools are doing a lot of passion projects. Mm -hmm. Look at something that they're interested in. Yeah. So. I really love that model, Barbara. Um, when you shared that with me, I was like, oh my goodness. It's just amazing to see those different stages of learning and growing compartmentalized like that. You, you don't realize, and you may even, what, when I looked at this and we had our discussion about it, is in the same classroom, mm -hmm. I have kids who are compliant and then I have others who are actually in the flow, right? Learning mm -hmm. at different paces and different stages of comfort with, with where they are, with the material. Um, you know, a lot of that has to do with how we differentiate with students and take them through the learning process. But this, when we looked at this together, I thought, wow, you know, we, we always want to strive to towards getting our kids to that flow and understanding that we've got to take them through some critical phases before we can get there. We just can't expect it just kind of, oh, aren't you jazzed and excited about this? I'm like, no, because I don't have the skills to, to be there yet. And, yeah. and making sure that we work with them to get, get them to that level where they are just sailing through their education and not even in an easy way, but in engaged in productive struggle, but because they want to be, right? They yeah. Want to be. Well, we want them to be lifelong learners. Yes. And then luckily for, you know, me and Kathleen was knowing Sylvia Duckworth, 
who did the graphics <laughs> for us. She's amazing. Yeah. And, yeah. and she's always in the flow when it comes, she goes, what do you mean you don't know how to sketch note? You can do it. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So, yeah, you can have to, but that's, we can always be that way because we're always, we're always a learner. And that's mm -hmm. what we want even for our parents. Absolutely, I and agree. So we want to thrive in this pandemic and I love this. Yeah, we are, we are striving to thrive. <laughs> I'm telling you, every day is a, is a new adventure, a new journey. Um, I, I just set about this year trying to create um, as close a learning environment um, as possible to where we were in previous years. You know, of course, I have all new students this year. Um, and they've had different teachers who, who um, gave them different learning experiences and opportunities. Um, but I knew coming in, it was, they were scared. They were um, confused. <laughs> they really didn't know what to expect. And I wanted to give them my best as a teacher and keep them involved in engaging activities so that they can get their education and get to the flow. Mm -hmm. um, so we had to get a little, um, I guess, uh, I wouldn't say, untraditional because I think all the things that we're doing are still the kinds of activities that, well, for sure I would have engaged in the classroom, but just kind of taking things to a, a new level. And so just a few of the things that we've done this year already, you talk about passion projects. We have di we have really taken the dive into passion projects head first this year, but this is the first year I'm using Wakelet. I love for Wakelet. students to, yes, basically curate all their research. They're building out their learning about their topic even further. And what we've done with passion projects in Wakelet this year is we have turned them into persuasive passion projects. Ooh. So they are not, of course, um, basing their um, projects on background knowledge, but research that brings an, uh, you know, an unbiased, um, unopinionated perspective to their particular passion. And they're sharing those out with others to persuade them that they should pursue these passions as well. So it's oh. really exciting, really very exciting. Um, we have gone, you can see we're outside there. We were doing Socratic seminar. We, we couldn't do it in the classroom, you know, because of limitations with space and so forth. So we said, let's take it outdoors. We brought our chairs out, we brought our books out and we just sat down and had some really great discussion um, there about 1984, One Word 2020, um, which I <laughs> discovered through Meredith Johnson and Book Camp PD. Um, she shared that and I took that with kids and we just ran with it. And you see our word wall there. We did possibility questions. You talk about writing our own questions. So a couple of my students there um, on the whiteboard, we were working through um, some possibility questions that um, Tara Martin discusses in her book, um, <laughs> which are fantastic. So we, we read Night and we were coming up with questions like, you know, those what if questions or what are some ways or how might we? And it was pretty exciting. Um, we partnered with Melissa Hayes and her students in Columbus, Ohio. Yeah. So my, my freshman students are learning with kindergarten to second graders on oh Flipgrid. We have Flipgrid Pals, um, poetry contest with the Organic Poet. Our, our students are getting ready to get published here <laughs> in the next couple of weeks. So we are just, we are in the flow. We are moving along. We You're are pushing through lot. this pandemic. Um, because we have to, you know, we really have to, this is not the time for us to, yes, there are a lot of questions. Um, yes, there are obstacles. Yes, we're having setbacks. Um, but we can't, we just can't stop. You know, we have to keep pushing forward for our kids. It's wonderful. And then you mentioned this pausing to regroup. Yeah. This is so important. Well, we have to do this. We do. We do. And, and for me, it's been, and I noticed it right out of the gate, you know, this summer you know, with my Twitter pals and my teacher friends, we talked about how important um, social emotional learning was going to be mm -hmm. paying attention to how students are feeling. You know, you said at the beginning, we have to check, are you okay? Are you doing okay? <laughs> right? Yeah. Not how you're doing specifically, but are you okay? And in the classroom, we know kids don't always speak up. Even if you ask them if they're okay, you know, it's the shrug where they don't say anything. Yeah. Um, some do though, some are very open and upfront about it, but we need to, as educators more than ever pay attention. You know, what are, the, what are they saying? How are they saying it? Um, what's the tone? What's the mood in the classroom? What are they actually doing? How are they responding 
to what we're teaching them and trying to engage, engage them in. Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes we just need to stop. We've had to stop for conversations. We've stopped to celebrate and we have just <laughs> stopped. Like we're just going to take a break for a second. Everybody regroup. Do we need to take turns stepping out for mask breaks? What is it? Do we need to get up and move around? Um, we have to pay attention to what our kiddos are, are saying to us with their mouths, with their bodies, you know, um, yeah. it's a really trying time for everyone. Um, and a lot of people that we need to, to take care of in that classroom every day. That's, I mean, this is a great graphic too. I mean, just look at the idea. In fact, I'm going to stop the share right now and just talk to you for a moment before we pull everything together. <laughs> Because it's the kind of fun just to be side by side yes. <laughs> and tell you that um, you brought in so much uh, that I, I hope people know that this is going to be this is a video that you can go back and you can watch it again. <laughs> and like I said, we're going to be putting the, the, the video up, but we'll also have the slideshow and we'll also have um, the handout with where Dawn went crazy. She just <laughs> shared some <laughs> That's how I roll, Barbara. <laughs> I, well, you didn't go crazy. You just, you just shared so much. It was just wonderful. And the idea that I think that we were just in the flow, it was, yes. it was just really wonderful. And I, I'm so glad we had, I'm just glad that you had some time to share in your busy schedule. <laughs> oh, of course, of course. I love it. It's just, it's been, it's been really refreshing these last few months. Um, you know, we didn't know what, what summer was going to bring, yeah. let alone fall. And I have seen so many amazing educators sharing, you know, their work, um, their ideas, their hopes, making connections, friendships, just, it's amazing yeah. to have such a network. You think about the people that we're connected to and how many people we're connected to. And I truly feel like any one of those people I could go to if I needed help or support was, yeah. was something. And that in and of itself is, is a silver lining in all of this, the connections that, that folks have made with one another, because we really do need each other in this time. We don't know how long this is going to last. You know, we don't know how long we're going to have to mask up and, or before there's a vaccine. And if there's a vaccine, who's going to, you know, take it, how that's going to go. We don't even, we haven't even got to that point yet, but we are here yeah. for one another. And that has just been a blessing, a tremendous blessing. Yeah. And I really feel it's a blessing that I got to know you. It's Same. been wonderful. And, <laughs> and the thing is that we have a lot going on. We have an election coming up. Yeah, <laughs> we, we sure do. Yes. We a, lot, a lot. And I'm sure your kids probably talk about a lot of things. And I think, I think it's a really is a blessing that you can be there with them. That yeah. I know a lot of teachers are hurting inside. They just really miss their kids. And, yeah. and so, um, but I can tell you, I, I just, this is going to be one of my highs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so happy to be here. So thank you so much for sharing this. Is there anything you just want to pull it all together about the flow or engagement? That um, I you know, I, I just think it's, it's key. Any way that we can find to engage students is going to be critical. You know, we can't afford um, to you know, I don't, I don't want to say make excuses because we could find all the excuses in the world. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's honestly, that's the last thing I'm seeing teachers do right now. Um, but we've also got to care for ourselves in the process. It's so important that we take care of ourselves and, and find time to just kind of, um, you know, refresh ourselves, take a break if we need it mm-hmm. so that we can continue to be there for kids. You know, I just gave you a glimpse of my classroom and and it's busy. We're busy all the time. I'm busy all the time. The, you know, the kids are busy while they're learning. Um, and that's important because it does help to kind of keep our mind off other things. Um, but I, you know, I just encourage every teacher find, like you said, the way you get into your flow in your classroom as an educator, you know, we have our flow as well. And you know, when you're there, you know, when things are, are just mm-hmm. smooth sailing, um, acknowledge those successes and the failures and grow from them. Um, and it'll be okay. And I, I, I know we will get through all of this. There's, there's, you know, the other side of this. And when we're through it, I think about, oh, what we're going to know. And wow, it's going to be phenomenal. It'll be another book. 
Welcome here, right? <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Don. This is just thank you. amazing. I appreciate you having me here, Barbara. I really do. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Take care of yourself. <laughs>